Do you want to start editing videos on your computer, but you're afraid that your computer is just not powerful enough for video editing? Well, don't worry, because in this video, I'm going to be showing you guys how you can begin editing and producing high quality videos, even if you have a slow computer. So this is going to be a long one. So the first couple of steps is how you can make your computer faster. And the next couple of steps will be choosing the right video editor and optimizing the footage for performance. So step number one is to get an SSD drive and then use it as the main drive you store Windows on. Using an SSD drive for your boot device can be very beneficial for your computer because old fashioned hard drives use moving parts to store and read your data, which takes up more energy and it is way slower because it can't read a large amount of data at once because it uses moving parts. Now solid state drives on the other hand actually have no moving parts and the storage medium is actually more similar to what is inside of your iPhone. These are much faster and they take up a lot less energy, which is an added bonus for all you laptop users out there. You can actually find these for pretty cheap nowadays and I actually found a Lexar 256 gig SSD drive for about $22. Now step number two is to upgrade your RAM. So in my opinion, a good amount of RAM to begin editing videos with is 8 gigabytes of RAM. I've made a lot of videos with 8 gigabytes and it remains the bare minimum for editing videos nowadays. Now 8 gigabytes is enough for projects with moderate complexity, but you really would want to upgrade to 16 gigabytes of RAM if you start encountering slowdowns very frequently. Now step number three is to turn on high performance mode in your control panel. You can turn on high performance mode just by going into the search, typing power plan, and then turning on high performance mode. It will take out more energy because your components will be taking up more power, but it will improve performance by a lot when you're editing your videos. Now step number four is to scan for viruses. Now Windows already has a pretty good antivirus called Windows Defender, so you don't really need to buy a third-party antivirus software anymore. Scanning for viruses can help speed up your computer and protect your information. Now let's get into choosing the right video editor. Now there are many different options for video editing software out there. Many are paid and many are free, and I'll get this one out of the way first. And this first video editor that I'm going to be talking about is called Filmora. Now you may have seen them advertise their Filmora video editor everywhere, and I will be one of the first to say that I don't recommend Filmora. Even though Filmora is a free video editor, the free version of Filmora will lock away a lot of the features and it will leave an unavoidable watermark on your video. And even the paid version of Filmora isn't even that feature packed. And there are way better video editing programs that you can get for free, such as DaVinci Resolve. Now DaVinci Resolve is the industry standard for color grading and the program started off as a color grading program. But over the past couple of years, DaVinci Resolve has been transitioning into a video editing program and it is very, very feature packed. I've been using the free version of DaVinci Resolve for about four years now. It is great and it's very user friendly but with a very steep learning curve. And I do recommend it because it really is worth learning. There's also a studio version of DaVinci Resolve that costs 405 Canadian dollars. And it unlocks lots and lots more features involving artificial intelligence. If you install it and you realize that your GPU does not support DaVinci Resolve, try updating your graphics drivers or try to find an older version of DaVinci Resolve, preferably version 12.5 and above. And I'll leave a link to the website where you can do that down below. There is another very decent free video editing option called HitFilm Express. Now HitFilm Express is also another pretty feature packed editor because it has a very similar interface to even more premium video editing programs such as Premiere Pro. Now in HitFilm Express there are a couple of features and effects that are locked off and you do need the paid version of HitFilm Express to use. But HitFilm Express remains a very decent video editing software for beginners and intermediate users alike. There are also some very good paid video editing software as well. The best paid video editing software for performance, speaking from experience, is Sony Vegas Pro. Now when I used to edit videos on my old low-end Asus laptop, I found the performance in Sony Vegas Pro 14 to be better than the performance in DaVinci Resolve 16 at the time, which makes Sony Vegas Pro a much better option for low-end computers. So now I'm going to be showing you guys how you can optimize your footage so that you can get better performance when you're editing your video. You can make lots of performance improvements by just changing the format of your video. Now. It is recommended that you do shoot your video in an intra-frame codec and not an inter-frame codec. An intra-frame codec actually compresses your video equally throughout the entire frame, while an inter-frame codec would compress your video based on the motion that's in the video. So if you have a moving subject in your video and you have a background that stays completely still, the codec doesn't need to save each frame including the background, it can just save the data that's actually changing between each frame. The reason why this is important is because intra-frame compression is much less efficient in saving data relative to the perceived quality, but your video editor is able to see the footage a lot better. Now inter-frame compression is more complicated to decode because it's not as easily accessible because the data in an inter-frame compression codec does not work in a very traditional way. Therefore, it's a worse codec for video editing.
Mezzanine formats are the ones that you want to be using for video editing. A more modern mezzanine format is something called Apple ProRes, which I think the iPhone 13 and higher supports. So in normal video editors, you can generate something called proxies, and it's a process that you can do to your video that basically converts your video into what are essentially cache files that are much easier for your computer to process than normal complicated video files. DaVinci Resolve has the ability to generate something called optimized media, which converts your video into the DNX HRXQ format and it makes the video easily readable by your computer. Now before I end this video, I want to say that I actually edited this entire video on this old HP laptop from 2010. It has a first generation i5 CPU, 8GB of RAM, and an old NVIDIA Quadro GPU. So yeah, go ahead, start your editing journey. If you want a DaVinci Resolve tutorial, I'll leave a link for that up here, and I'm going to see you guys in the next video.